It's Taylor from Dames All Mode, and today I am starting a new Italian Renaissance pattern. Specifically, I am making a new Gamora, which is a underdress worn during the Italian Renaissance from about the 1490s until the 1520s, 30s, 40s. There's some changes that go there. I have already made one of these before, which is this one here. So even though I have obviously made one of these before, today I'm gonna to do something a little bit different and I'm actually gonna be inspired by this Margot Anderson pattern for the Gamora. Now, I'm not strictly using this pattern specifically because I already have a pattern for this garment, which I made up when I made this one, but I really wanted to use this for her instructions because she's got period correct instructions on how to create a bodice that offers support. If you've seen my previous videos about this outfit, you know that I wear my 1790s stays underneath it, which gives the proper look of the support, but obviously is nowhere near being historically accurate. There doesn't appear to be any corsetry that was worn with these dresses, and all the stiffening is actually in the bodice itself. This one is totally soft with no support whatsoever, so I want to create this dress with something that creates some bust support and shaping, so it's a little bit easier to wear and more historically accurate. I am essentially using this as a guide and I'm gonna make a few changes to it just for what I think will work better for my body. Um, but this was really valuable in, in seeing the methods that she used to do this. And from what I can tell, the pattern itself looks really good. So I would say I tentatively recommend this pattern. I haven't found like really any commercial patterns for this period. So if you don't feel comfortable drafting one of these yourself, this might be a really good starting point and the instructions, like I said, are really good. So this is a fabric that I found on Etsy. This is also a modern synthetic upholstery fabric. It is not necessarily a dress weight fabric. It's not silk or any natural fiber. Um, but since this is definitely a costume, and I know that I said I'm trying to make it more historically accurate, but I'm definitely not using historically accurate fabric, but I don't know, just go with me here. I wanted the methodology to be <laughs> historically accurate just so I had a better understanding of how they went together. So this fabric is going to be a little bit annoying to work with. Um, it's, it's a little stiff. It's also got a lot of sort of loose threads and stuff which makes it kind of a pain to deal with. You know, using a modern upholstery fabric. So I know I chose fabric that's gonna be a little bit tougher, but we can easily work with that, no problem. Now, since I already have a pattern for this that I know fits me perfectly, I don't have to worry at all about doing any fitting or anything like that. So I'm gonna dive right into the making it. I will say that on this pattern from Margot Anderson, there are fitting tips in here. Um, so once again, if you're not sure about how to do that, this looks like a great, great way to learn some of that information. Typically, this style of dress would have been more of an underdress, and there was a garment that would have gone over it for more formal occasions but I'm basically gonna be making this up as it is uh, the only part of this garment. And maybe one day I'll make something to go over it, but for this purpose, I'm gonna be primarily wearing it as an individual standalone piece that is the completed outfit. Because of that, I'm going to add some fullness to the skirt to make sure it's got a lot of volume. So I'm gonna be doing three panels of the skirt, and I'm actually gonna cut that first and set those aside so that I know how much fabric I have left over for my bodice and my sleeves. But I'm not sure how much extra fabric I'm gonna to have to play with with those, so I'm gonna cut my skirt panels first and then set them aside, and then I'll have a better picture of what I have to deal with for the bodice and the sleeves. So step one, cutting the skirts. I do wanna point out that the pattern for this actually has you cut uh, the skirt pieces on gorge, so they're triangles but I'm cutting mine totally straight, so they're just rectangles. And I'm doing that because this fabric is so shreddy that I don't wanna do anything that's gonna add more raw edges, and I'm just gonna use the um, selvage edges of the fabric to sew them together, just to sort of preserve it and make my life a little bit easier. Thank you. 
So the way to achieve stiffening in a bodice like this is by basically making like a layer cake of stacks of fabric to give it stiffness and thickness and then everything gets stitched together. The pattern actually calls to use buckram, not like the same kind of buckram for a hat, but like tailoring buckram. And there's instructions on how to make it in the pattern, but I just don't have the time. I don't have the supplies on hand and I really want to get to work on this right now. So I'm actually going to use uh, a heavyweight linen canvas that I have that I got from Burnley and Trowbridge. So this has a, a good amount of body. Um, it's relatively heavy and I think I can achieve it by um, using stacks of this. I also have a plain linen lining that I'm going to use and an exterior layer of a, um, a softer but also heavy linen to use as a mulling layer, which I'll also talk about. And then of course I have the fashion fabric layer. Now there's a lot of steps and some of these layers need seam allowance and some don't. So I actually wrote out like a list of all the different steps that I need to do so I don't accidentally um, forget to cut something or cut something with seam allowance that doesn't need seam allowance or vice versa. And I only have a little bit of my uh, linen canvas that I'm using so I do have to be sort of careful and use it judiciously. I don't really have room to make mistakes. So now I'm just going to start cutting out all the different pieces of this bodice and then we'll talk about putting them together. I'm gonna admit, I was pretty skeptical that this zigzag method was gonna work, but boy, am I blown away. So this is like incredibly rigid now. It feels like it's been boned um, just with the addition of all the layers and the zigzag stitching. It's pretty incredible, and I think this is gonna be plenty supportive. I thought I was gonna have to put some bones in here also, but I really don't think I'm gonna need to. So go, Margot Anderson. I love this method, this is really great. Um, the other thing is that because all the seam allowances are sort of graded down, it's remarkably smooth. Like, it really does hide all those edges. So this is super cool. I'm, I'm going to use this method for other things in the future, too. Um, now I just need to sort of step all these layers together and start actually assembling the bodice. So I'm going to start out with my linen layer, which I have all sewn up as one piece. So all the seam lines are sewn together except for the shoulder seams, and it's just one big piece. Then on top of that, I'm going to add in my stiffening interlining layer, and then I'm going to put in my mulling layer. This layer is not in the pattern itself, and to be honest, I probably, I'm not even really sure that I need it because this ended up being smoother than I anticipated, but I'm just going to put it in just for good measure to give some smoothness to that outer layer.
All right, last night I went home and I sewed uh, down the lining on everything. This is probably overkill that I like sewed down the whole thing, but I was worried about this shifting because there's so many layers in it. So I stitched down along every seam line uh, just to hold it in and then I folded in, boy, I'm dropping this a lot. And then I folded in every seam allowance on the lining on the inside and sewed that down too. So it's like a big sandwich. So now I'm gonna cut out the fashion fabric and I'm going to uh, lay, put that all together as one piece and I'm gonna lay it on top of this and then sew that down so that everything is together. I have my bodice almost together. The only thing that I have not done is I still have not done the shoulders. Um, and I'm not going to do that until I've got the skirts on because the skirts are so heavy because of this fabric that I want to make sure it's not going to pull in any sort of weird way. And it's possible I may need to adjust the shoulder straps. So I'm actually going to leave those to be like nearly one of the very last things that I do on this. So we're going to put the bodice aside for a little bit and we'll get to work on the skirts. So I want to sew the center front seam as matching as I can get it because it's going to have a split right down the center uh, for about maybe four or five inches um, so I can put it on and off because it's going to close up the center front. On another fabric I would just cut into whatever that was going to be but because this fabric is so thick and kind of shreddy it's going to be really tricky to actually do that in a clean and neat way without it having sort of like a big bunchy gappy thing right here. So instead I'm gonna utilize the salvage edges and have that be the center front so I can just turn them back and stitch them down and it'll close together nicely without a lot of additional fiddling by me. So I'm gonna take extra effort to make sure that I am pattern matching on the center front seam so that it's as hidden as can be on that very visible part of the dress. <laughs> I have my huge pieces of skirt together. As you can see, this fabric is just shredding like crazy, which is part of the issues with uh, using this style of fabric as well. One thing you probably can't see, but I'll show you, is that the back side of this fabric has all these little loose golden threads to create the design, and boy, do they catch on everything. So what I'm gonna do, and I hadn't planned on doing this, but I realize now I'm gonna have to, is I'm gonna put in a, it's essentially a hem facing that's gonna go probably on the bottom, like 
gosh, maybe, maybe 10 or 12 inches. I want to make it pretty wide so that all these little tiny threads aren't catching on my shoes or the ground, if it's touching the ground a little bit, or even on my like stockings, if they have a burr in them, it'll be really annoying and uncomfortable if these start catching on things. So I'm going to just face this whole thing. I have one seam still open, so it's a long piece instead of being a tube right now. And I'm going to do the facing first with it as one long piece like this. It's just much easier to do it that way. I'm just going to use a thin white cotton shirting for the facing that I do. It's really smooth and it's really lightweight, so it'll protect the fabric nicely without adding a lot of bulk. If I was using like a thinner silk or something, I would face this with something sturdier. But this polyester already has a lot of body, maybe even too much body. We'll see how that works out once I start pleating it. So I don't really want to do anything that's going to add bulk. So I'm going to use this cotton facing to do it. And at the same time, this will help me put in a hem for the garment as well. So we'll do two steps with one step that way. All right, let's cut out and apply this facing. finished sewing on the hem facing for my skirt um, but one thing I have not done yet is sewn these edges together and that's because I'm having some anxiety about how much fabric I put into this skirt. This fabric is about 40 inches wide so I put in three panels worth which makes for a hem of uh, 120 inches which is a pretty modest amount for uh, the skirts of one of these. They're usually pretty full but this fabric has so much body and it's so stiff because it's this drapery fabric that I think it might be maybe too full and puffy. So I'm, I, but I'm, but I'm not going to know that until I actually start pleating it down and, and putting it on the bodice itself. So I even tried like taking a scrap and doing like a little test cartridge pleat to see what happened. And it's, I mean, that's really full and pretty stiff. So but it's so hard to tell without the weight of the skirts actually pulling down because that's obviously going to flatten out the puffiness a little bit. So I think what I'm going to have to do is just cartridge pleat all of this, or at least half of it, and just see if it looks like that's going to be a reasonable amount or if I need to thin out the skirts a little bit. And I, I can't predict that until I start doing it. So I might have just done a lot of extra work you know, sewing this uh, thing on the whole way. Um, and I might have to undo that work a little bit later, but I just can't see a way around figuring out if this is enough without actually just doing the work to do it, which kind of sucks. <laughs> but uh, hopefully this will be okay and I won't be doing any extra work, but I just don't know. I'm going to have to experiment a little bit. So I'm going to cartridge pleat the skirts now. And then once I get halfway done with the cartridge pleating, I'll pin it onto the bodice and test to see if it's going to be too full or if this is okay with how I have it set now. So, wish me luck. 
Okay, let's get to cartridge pleating. Now that it's time for the cartridge pleating, I'm gonna show you one of my all-time favorite sewing tips I've ever learned, and that is to use gingham as a marking for your cartridge pleats. So instead of individually marking every dot that you need to sew, which takes forever, you can use uh, the laid out automatic grid that comes on gingham as a needle guide and you don't really have to think about it at all. It's genius. You can also use gingham ribbon, but I don't have any of that on hand. I just have fabric. So I'm gonna cut some strips of this fabric attach them to the top of the skirt, and then I'll use that to actually do my stitching. It makes for a really even and quick way to do it, plus it adds a little bit of bulk to the fabric itself, and that helps to make those really dense, sort of puffy looking cartridge pleats, which are just such a beautiful element to add to any dress. two hooks and eyes here and I'll probably put another one closer up at the top. This is going to lace closed with lacing rings but I don't actually want that to be the cinching point that holds them together. I kind of want that to be more decorative because uh, when you lay stuff up it does have a tendency to loosen a little bit and I want to make sure this stays tight. <laughs> Otherwise things are going to start sliding down which is not good so I'm going to put in another hook and eye here and then put the lacing rings on. I just have the shoulders pinned they're a little tight, so I'm just going to loosen them up a little bit. But this is basically all finished. Looks pretty good, doesn't it? Uh, this is a little fuller than I would like. I mean, it's this fabric is just so stiff, but um, considering I'm just going to be wearing this on its own without a dress over it, I guess it actually works pretty well. It is very theatrical looking, isn't it? All right, let's finish up these shoulder straps and then I'll add on the lacing rings. And then basically I gotta start on the sleeves, but so far so good. Mm -hmm. 